All right, Facebook is live. Instagram is live. Hi. Let's have a seat. Bit of product placement, front on. <laughs> so before everyone pops on, I'm just gonna talk about Sam's green juice. Sam is the epitome of health. And he even walked into today's Facebook Live with the green juice and I said to him, hi Michelle, um, hi Lena, um, this is gonna be great for today. Lena, do you see this green juice that I've been telling you to drink? Sam bought it in today. All right, so we have so much to talk about today and I'm so excited to have Sam here. He's a very, very, very special guest that you guys are very lucky to have. Hi guys on Instagram, um, if you have comments and stuff and questions, just type them in and I'll reply to them later once we finish because we've got a lot to get through today. I'm prepared with all of my questions for Sam. And today's topic is how energy can change your life. So I know that a few of you have been coming to me uh, with a few mental health issues, uh, just feeling a little bit demotivated in life and I thought what better way to help conquer this than with the success guru himself, Sam McCool. Who is Sam? Why is he here? Let me give you a little bit of an introduction on Sam. Sam, first off, is the most amazing person you'll ever meet. Oh, thank you. Thank you. He holds a Master of Laws degree and is the founder and managing director of MSA National with a team of over 360 people. That's nearly 400 people. And look how calm he is. Amazing. I have a great team. They do all the work. <laughs> I'm privileged to actually work with them. And he's such a great boss and he's so humble. That's what I love about Sam. He's also an entrepreneur who has developed several successful businesses during his career. He's a highly effective success coach and keynote speaker dedicated to wellness in the workplace. And he is also the author of A Higher Branch which we're gonna go uh, through a little bit today, as well as a guide to greatness, which you guys can also have the access, uh, have access to. So, we're gonna dive straight into the word energy because this is the thing, I think that you agree, that most people in our society right now are lacking a little bit of. So what, Sam, to you, does energy mean? Well. Firstly, um, thank you for your time. I'm going to respect and honor your time by providing information of value. And uh, Helen, thank you for your energy, it's very contagious. So, so we're talking about energy and how contagious it is. And I can tell you in 2015, our company only consisted of about 70 people. Between 2015 and now, we grew to over 360 people. We multiplied our turnover 17 times. Uh, which is which is an extraordinary amount of growth. Um, in 2016, we were the fastest growing company in Australia. Now, if if you ask me what was the single most important factor that contributed to this success, and and I say we implemented a new, I don't want to call it a wellness program because it's such a cliche now, but we implemented a new perform holistic performance coaching program internally, which had at its foundation boosting people's energy levels. Now, when we when we talk about energy, uh, it's not just physical energy. We have four layers to our energy. We have the physical, the mental, emotional, and the spiritual. And the deeper you go, the higher the vibrational frequency that has in fact been measured by scientists. Now scientists uh, uh, show that your mental energy is 64 times more powerful than your physical energy. Wow. Which means that what you think is far more important than what you eat and how you move. So your thoughts. Absolutely, your thoughts. Now here's the thing though, the next layer is your emotions and that's 5,000 times more powerful than your thoughts. Wow! So in other words, try thinking, uh, try talking yourself out of um, anger or fear or depression, you can't. If, if you could talk yourself out of anxiety and depression, you wouldn't need any drugs, right? You wouldn't need any. Yeah. Um, yeah. But So getting back to, uh, uh, to uh, how we implemented uh, a focus on energy in our workplace is we started telling people that your number one currency in the 21st century is not time, it's not even money, it's energy. Because I've noticed that people with the highest energy get more done in less time more sustainably. 
And so that makes you highly effective. It's not about the number of hours you work. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's really your effectiveness at work. So I had people in the office working 12 hour days, not being as effective as someone who was uh, focused on their well-being, who was only working seven hours a day. They were getting the same amount of work done. So we started rolling out this performance coaching uh, uh, framework internally. And it's not a wellness program, you know, we, we don't have the, uh, I mean, we have a full-time masseuse at work, we have the yoga instructor come in once a week, we have stretch sessions during the day, we have cold press juices, but that just makes for a comfortable work environment. It does not do anything for a person's uh, personal life. Wait, what made you want to bring in a massage therapist and create your Zen room and bring that holistic thing into your business? When did you do it and what made you do it? Well, first of all, when I, come, when I walk through our organization, when I walk through the, you know, uh, the floor and look at everyone, I, I do so with one frame of reference and that is if my son or daughter was working here, would they be comfortable? Would they be respected? Would they be growing? Would they be challenged? And if I can't answer those questions in the positive, then I'm, I know that things are not right. And I think one of the key areas uh, in the uh, corporate world is the amount of time that we spend sitting. And uh, you know, this, uh, the research on this area is now widely known, so I'm not gonna regurgitate it. So having a masseuse uh, really gets people, th th there's two effects with that. One, obviously, the masseuse does more than just massage. He actually does stretching in his Zen room. Um, but the other thing that he does is that uh, he gives people permission to switch off. And he also listens a lot. <laughs> and, and people sometimes don't need to be coached. They don't need someone telling them what to do. They don't need someone tell, quoting the latest uh, you know, research on this or that. Uh, they just need someone that just wants, just listens, and that's what he does really, really well. We're very blessed, actually, to have our um, uh, internal massage therapist, Sam. Have you yes, met Sam? Yes, I've met Sam. I do massage as well, and I also find that um, we also help to move people's energy around their body. So if they're feeling stagnant or if they're feeling a little bit low, sometimes you know they walk in a little bit down, Absolutely. and by the time they leave. But that comes down to the energy transference from you as well. So, true. so it comes down to the a massage therapist. I've been on holidays where I've booked a massage, and you know, ten minutes into it, I say, "I'm sorry, I need to stop there. I'm just not feeling good." And I do that. Wow. Right? Because and you have to honor and respect your energy. So people watch what they eat, but they never think about what they're consuming uh, through their mind by watching stuff or hearing stuff. But more importantly what they're consuming emotionally by being exposed to other people's energy. So you obviously have a very nice energy about you. I, I haven't had one of your treatments. But the other thing that massage does, it gets you out of your head and into your body. Because we're sitting all day and we're told by our you know, bosses, hey, you know, serve people from the heart, give great customer service. But great customer service does not live in their head. You can't, empathy is in the body. So massage is absolutely critical to get people out of their head and into their body. So when they get back to their desk, yeah. um, they can connect with others from the heart and be real in their communications. So this is in his workplace. So everyone here has access to a massage therapist during their work day. It's so amazing what Sam does. Speaking of bodies, you know, I'm a personal trainer. <laughs> Sam, I met um, at my other place of work at F45 and I uh, was just drawn to his energy. And then I was like, who is this guy? And then he ended up being like the, the most amazing human in the world. Anyway, bodies. People obsess over their body shape and they never seem to feel happy in their own skin. I train people every day who say, send me things on Instagram. Um, Amy, Monique, hello, I'm talking to you guys. And they say, I want this butt, or I want abs like this, or, you know, I want a yes. body like this. And they're just never happy. Okay, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, psychology that goes into um, that particular, uh, I think, dysfunction, if I want to call it dysfunction, in our thinking. And look, I have a 15-year-old daughter, and I'm going through that now, where she has body shape issues. And if you see her, you think, how can you have body shape issues? So it's clearly, first of all, good health is not measured 
is uh, not uh, determined by your body shape. It's determined, it's measured by your energy levels. So I find that the most, uh, ultimately when people are seeking a particular body shape, it's because they want to be attractive to others. Deep down, if you're honest with yourself, that's what it's all about. And there's a lot of psychology behind that that I won't go into. But I have noticed that the most attractive people in the room are always the people with the highest of energy. And we are naturally born, uh, you know, drawn to those people. I've been in a bar you know, when I was younger and single where you'll come across someone that's super attractive, whether it's a guy or a girl, and um, you know, they don't have the energy or the, the way they talk to you is, is rather flat. And I've been you know, uh, in, uh, in board meetings with people who are just alive and they're electric. So we read people's energy first and hear what they have to say second. And we, uh, uh, so yes, initially there is that, uh, you know, physical attraction, but um, uh, that only lasts 10 minutes. <laughs> That's what the sign says. And then what you're left with after that is your energy. And this is not just in uh, attraction between pe uh, people, but this is also the attraction between you and a client. In business, if you want to be successful in business, you need to make sure that your energy, your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual energy is vibrating at such a frequency that attracts people to you. So if you're obsessed with your body shape, you're actually putting emotional stress on yourself and that depletes your energy, which ironically makes you less attractive. Wow, does that make sense? That was just like a huge light bulb moment for you guys. <laughs> and what I try to teach you, Stop wasting your time obsessing over your body shape and do things instead to help increase your energy, which will in turn make you love your body shape more. Absolutely. Wow. And I love what you said there about make you love your body shape more because most people these days are doing things out of fear. So we want to look attractive because we fear rejection. We, wa uh, we want to avoid eating, uh, you know, uh, high fat, high sugary stuff because we don't want to get, uh, you know, diabetes. We don't want to get fat. We don't want to, uh, you know, um, uh, spend too much time on an uh, iPad because we fear getting glasses. Everything is done out of fear. Whereas you need to flip that and say, I'm eating this because I love my body, not because I fear getting something. And that's a huge, huge shift that you can make in your psychology. As I said earlier, your emotional happiness is far more important than, your, than diet and exercise. I mean, if you can, if you can have great diet uh, and you exercise religiously, and also you optimize your sleep, which is I think the third important uh, pillar to great health, and you are emotionally happy, then you are hitting what athletes call peak performance. But if you do have that piece of tiramisu, the worst thing you can do is actually beat yourself up and feel guilty over it because the emotional damage you're doing is far worse than the physical damage that you're doing to your body by eating that. I, um, does that make sense? It yeah. does make sense because I coach my clients all the time and sometimes they're too scared to tell me if they've eaten something bad. So I try to take the fear out of that and say just tell me what you've eaten and I can help coach you um, to see if it's becoming either a bad habit or if it's just a one-off treat. And this is why I love what I love about yourself. You're not just a personal trainer. You take a holistic view at a person. Because I've, I've seen you talk and I've, uh, we've spoken many times before. And I think wh whatever your genre is, whether you're a nutritionist, whether you're a personal trainer, everyone has to start uh, coaching from the same framework that you do. And that is take a holistic view at the person. Yeah. If you're not just you're not just uh, you know coaching them on diet and exercise, and yeah. uh, so I, I find your brand of coaching completely aligned with what we do at the High Brain Success Academy, and uh, uh, yeah, I respect you for that. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Sam. It's so great being around like-minded people, and you guys are all like-minded as well. So our proximity is amazing. So I'm <laughs> so happy about today. Now, um, going on to nutrition. I teach my clients to do something called intermittent fasting each day or every other day. So um, what I make them do is a few hours before bed, stop eating, let the body first recover and do all it needs to do while we're asleep. And then we fast in the morning until mid-morning uh, or lunchtime, depends when they've stopped eating. 
um, and if they can't do it every day, it's okay, I just tell them to do it every other day. Now what's interesting was when I was reading your uh, book, A Guide to Greatness, you said something super interesting about the sun and digestion, which I never knew, which I think you guys might not know as well. So can you tell us how the sun relates to our digestion? Okay, so our digestive fire, um, and this uh, this is now supported by science, but it was ancient wisdom really that uh, the Eastern philosophies in India and the Far East knew like thousands of years ago, and that is your digestive fire rises and sets with the sun. So it's strongest when the sun is strongest uh, during the day. Uh, and that's the time you should be eating your biggest meal because as soon as you eat it, your metabolism is at its peak and it's going to digest what you're eating. The, the thing is, once the sun goes down, that pipe, that uh, that fire inside your belly just dims. It's like a it's like a um, a, a fire that just burns out, yeah. right? And there's just embers there, or there's a pilot light. Now that's that pilot light and those embers are not enough to digest, you know, heavy food at night. And look, it's very difficult. Uh, I I had a late meal last night. I ended up eating at nine thirty. So yeah. it's one of those um, you know challenges. I think we have to accept. Um, we need to make progress there, not aim for perfection, because yeah. you will have nights where you have to eat late. But just be uh, just be mindful that you know if your digestive fire is low, make sure you eat less and make sure you eat certain foods that are easy to digest, and they are typically live foods. So if I have to eat late, I'll have like a papaya with a handful of almonds. So stuff like that that has the inbuilt life force in it has not been processed. So stay away from processed foods at night if you have to eat late. And as I said, I'm guilty of it, especially when I have a F45 class <laughs> late, late in the day, because you're, you know, you're just like, you're hunting for carbs after that. And uh, yeah, it's really hard to go to bed also when you're hungry. So yeah, fasting should be, the fast should start three hours before bed um, and then last 15, 16 hours yeah. Yeah, for it to, for your body to go into a state of autophagy uh, autophagy basically means you go into a self-cleaning mode where your body um, cleans all the plaque from uh, uh, your brain, from your arteries. It's yeah, highly beneficial. It's the only thing that's proven to reverse aging. The only thing that science has proven that will actually not stop aging, but actually reverses aging. I'm great. basic maths when you eat something you take the energy you earn minus the energy you burn to actually get the goodness from it yeah. and that energy you burn is your digestion right so when your digestion kicks in that burns a lot of energy the energy in your gut um, is off the charts and, and your brain but um, so so when you look at it like that the the foods that are the lowest in energy yeah. are processed foods. The foods that are highest in energy are live foods. So if you take an apple, for example, yeah. that's a live food. The moment you bake it, turn it into an apple pie, it becomes a dead food. So your, when your digestion has, has to sift through the dead part of the food to find the living where all the energy is. Mm -hmm. And if you burn more than what you earn, the negative effect is going to be a slump in energy. If you earn more than what you burn, the negative effect, the positive effect is you can have more energy. So simple maths, really. Yeah. So you need to try and make at least 70% of what you eat uh, a live food. And that goes for even red meat. Um, you know, you should have that medium rare instead of burnt to the, <laughs> burnt to the core. Is that because it's eat more easier to digest? Because it has enzymes, oh, live dead. enzymes. It has more live enzymes, so when you're cooking something, you're destroying the live enzymes. Medium, well, red, medium red. Yeah, I mean that's if you do eat red meat, because there's a, a few clients that I recommend they don't eat red meat. You know, everyone's um, the one thing I notice is that a lot of people are just 
so busy preaching, you know, one thing over another. They're like evangelists, you know. Yeah. The, the, no, there's nothing worse than sitting next to a vegan at a dinner party, right? <laughs> Not nothing against vegan. I've actually prescribed veganism for some of my um, uh, coaching clients. Um, but you need to honor and respect your genetic heritage and find out what is best for you. And there are now bio, there's biotechnology uh, that can actually determine. You can do hair mineral analysis, micro, gut microbiome analysis, blood tests to determine what foods you should be staying away from. So now we're entering an era where biotech and infotech are converging and you can get highly engineered with the way you manage yourself. Eat, not just your diet, even your your sleep um, yep. optimization. There's something called the chronotype that you need to discover to optimize your sleep. And that's something that um, you know we're going to, with uh, that's, all these principles um, is stuff that I teach in one-on-one -on -one coaching and what I teach here internally. But for the first time, we're actually going to um, uh, disclose all of this material to the public in uh, an event in January called Upgrade Your Life, which I think you're going to. Yes, which you're going to yep. go to, which I'm going to tell you all about soon. Um, that is so exciting because... because uh, sorry to yeah. uh, interrupt you, but what you talking about? Uh, at that event, I have 10 leading global experts, and one of them is a lady called Alessandra Edwards, who's actually based here in Australia. She's in Melbourne. So whenever I do my coaching, I send my clients to her to get all these biometrics on them. And then after we have the, these, uh, you know, the stats, then I say, okay, for you, vegetarian is good, or, or, or paleo, or keto. Uh, otherwise, you're self-medicating. I coached a guy recently who was referred to me who went on a ketogenic diet, lost a lot of weight, but he then had a blood test and discovered he had diabetes because his energy levels crashed. So uh, a, a friend of his referred him to me, and I, I asked him, why did you go on a ketogenic diet? Mm. And he said, oh, I just read so much about it, and it was on YouTube. And I said, yeah. well, did you know that a high-fat diet, which is what ketogenic is, actually causes insulin resistance in certain genetic types? And he said, I did not know that. And so we did all this testing with Alessandra, and we, we figured out that he should have gone on a, a, a macro, macro um, nutrient diet. Um, formula of 40-40-20, right. which is 40% carbs, 40% protein, 20% fat. Wow. So he was actually, was with the opposite. All, yeah, he was doing like 70, 80% fat and he was actually destroying his organs because it's just not, you know, uh, genetically in his DNA, that's not what he was wired to, uh, to take on. So you need to honor and respect your uniqueness. And that's the way you need to, uh, uh, to manage these things uh, going forward. But there are universal principles. One is Eat live foods, yep. right? Whatever your genetic type, eat live foods. Uh, two, don't eat too much. <laughs> Three, don't eat too late <laughs> when the sun goes down. Yep. These are universal to everyone. Yep. And most importantly, don't eat when you're stressed. That is very important because you are not what you eat, you are what you absorb. And any food, even if it's organic food, can turn toxic in your system if you are in a state of stress, because when you go into a state of fight or flight, your digestion shuts down. You literally have food just rotting in your stomach, and that becomes- Even if it's healthy food. Even if it's healthy. So your emotional happiness at the time of eating, you should never argue at the table, never watch TV, because you should be engaging your senses. Eating should be a multi-sensory experience. Can you explain that? Because I was reading that in your book. Listen. Drop everything that you've got and listen to this. This is so important. <laughs> Sorry, what is it that you want me to focus on? The multi-sensory. You're eating, you shouldn't be doing things while you're eating. Correct, so we have five senses for a reason, you know? Sight, sound, touch, feel, whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, now, the more you engage those senses, the more alive you feel. And the body works, uh, when you look at the food and it's colors, when you taste, but uh, when you taste the food, smell the food, and when you touch the food even, your body triggers the right enzymes for that particular food. Now this is like phenomenal. It's so, this is ancient wisdom, but now modern science is actually confirming it. Uh, and I, I read a book many years ago, and it's called uh, Why French Women Don't Get Fat, or right. something like that. And it was because that the French actually sit and the meal is a holy hour for them where they sit take their time and it's an experience where they focus on their food so if your body releases the right enzymes when you're eating you, you can digest anything but you need to be engaged with it 
And that multi-sensory experience applies not just for eating, it applies for learning. If you want to learn something, mm. then you know, um, a, a multi-sensory experience, so if you're standing and moving while you're learning, for example, yeah. so if you're jogging, listening to an audio tape, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna absorb that a lot better than just sitting and listening to it because yeah. our bodies evolved whilst we're in motion. So I'm all about multi-sensory learning, multi-sensory um, uh, eating, uh, multi-sensory exercising, that's what we do at F45, yeah. yeah. So maybe why don't we all just try not to have our phones, iPads or TVs on while we eat our meals this week and see what happens. Absolutely, uh, yeah, no TV, no TV. It's, it's everywhere now. Right? And, and no one toxic with you as well. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> if your ex is around the corner, say, see you later, I need to yeah. eat my meal. <laughs> Look, Come. A lot of people don't realize that toxic people have a bigger impact on us than toxic food. Uh, so you gotta yeah. watch who you associate with, who you eat with, you know, who you work with. And I'm not saying, you know, uh, put those people down or be judgy, but just uh, limit your exposure to them, especially if it's a family member. Yeah, you know. I agree. I agree with that. So that was um, about gut absorption. Now, as I was reading your ebook, I was amazed by your holistic approach and that how um, in sync our values are. Um, I also teach and preach to my clients about breathing, yes. deep breathing, meditation, and the art of slowing down. Um, I also enforce this into my clients by um, making sure Mondays in our program is all mobility, stretching, flexibility based, breathing based, and balance based. Um, what do you do for balance? Because he's so busy. He's taking the time out today to come here. So if you're one of those people that can't come to training because you're busy, think about Sam. But let's talk about balance. How do you find your balance? Well, firstly, I do it because I love and respect you. That's why I'm here. So, uh, <laughs> and I wanna help you help your uh, people, your tribe. Uh, and that's just how I'm wired as well. I think one of the reasons why we're successful here is because we care. And I think we're not born to become doctors, personal trainers, lawyers, baristas. That's not what we're born to do. We're born to help others. Okay. And if you don't take the time out to share, and that's how I've learned. I've learned from other people who are kind enough to share. But how do I uh, seek balance? Um, uh, I spend a lot of time in nature. So in the morning when I wake up, I go for, I'm fortunate enough to, I live on the Northern Benches and the, uh, near the Karingai Chase National Park and I actually religiously take my dogs for a walk every morning and I don't take my phone or if I do, it'll be off in my pocket and I just take in uh, nature. And I, I find that the color green and just the energy that's out there, it's just sort of, um, and the, the, the break of the morning light on your eyes just boosts. Uh, I'm just getting relaxed listening to you. It's, it's really, it's really, <laughs> it's, a, it's a cathartic experience first at daybreak. Yeah. Um, I go to F45 as well to neutralize the stress that builds up during the day. Uh, I do sit, do a lot of sitting and I do a bit of standing. I have a stand up desk, but I find that sometimes just as toxic as sitting. Yeah. Just standing in one spot is not normal either. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, um, uh, what and do you mean by neutralizing the stress? Why do you exercise to neutralize the stress? How, how does that work? Okay, so, you know, we talked about the importance of emotional happiness and how there is an endemic of people suffering from anxiety and unhappiness. I don't want to call it depression because I think we're quick to call it depression, but general state of unhappiness. Yep. And so there's no doubt you've got to treat the root cause of that. And the root cause of that is your mental and emotional well-being and how you manage those things. But the quickest way to get the baseline from uh, uh, you know, the toxic um, hormones of cortisol and adrenaline, from sitting all day, from being stressed, uh, the best way to, to uh, rebalance all your chemicals in your body, it's like making a soup, you know? You don't want to put things that's gonna make the soup taste awful. Yeah. You want the soup to taste nice. So in, in your body, you, you've got all these surge of uh, these chemicals that are trying to balance themselves. And I find the quickest way to do that is exercise. So it doesn't matter what, it's not gonna cure your uh, anxiety, it's not gonna cure your depression, but it will temporarily actually get you to baseline where then it puts you in a state of mind 
to be able to work on your anxiety and your depression, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of all those things. You've got to work on the, the body by you know, eating well, exercising, and sleep. Sleep and sunshine are much more effective for your, uh, your emotional happiness than diet and exercise. Um, Say that again. Listen, <coughs> did you just hear that? Sleep and sunshine are far more effective at um, curing any emotional or mental health issues than diet and exercise. And th this, is, uh, this is proven by science. So I've coached a few people internally as well as externally who I've prescribed, you know, what, sunshine first thing in the morning, don't wear sunglasses, and if, uh, lots of other things, uh, but more sleep. So sleep and sunshine and the right type of sleep after we figured out what their chronotype is. And it's like presto, two weeks later, they just say, I don't need my drugs anymore. You know, and just from sleep and sunshine. So sometimes the solution is so simple, but we're always trying to outsource response, you know, the responsibility of taking out care of ourselves. And the solutions are just right there in front of our nose. Yeah. I mean, but exercise is just like, it's proven to be more effective than Prozac in actually uh, getting you to baseline happiness. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So it's amazing. So, so at high intensity especially. And obviously the more yeah. you keep doing that and building that habit of exercising, if you are in a low place in life, um, obviously the benefits will just keep getting better and better and better. So you just got to stick cool. with yep. it. Even though you're in this mindset of, I don't want to get out of bed, I don't want to go, just, just, just go and just try it. Spot on, that's spot on. So, uh, and uh, what the, the, uh, when you feel like you don't want to do something, that's your cue to tell yourself that you force yourself to do it. So, you know, when you go, go home sometimes on a Friday night, and you think, oh, I don't want to go out. I don't feel like going out. The more you don't feel like doing something, the more you actually need to do something. And that's your cue to force yourself. What you use to do that is really up to you. I use pretty much friendships, you know, to hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. Our social life is so important to bring us out of any, you know, hole that we might be temporarily in. And rest assured, it's always temporarily. It's always yeah. temporary. You will, you will come out of any you know, doldrums yeah. um, if you just wake up and do the same things every day. And that is you know, eat well, exercise, you know, uh, get the right uh, amount of sleep, get your sunshine, hang out with the right people, you know, turn up to the sessions, turn up, you know, have that, uh, treat yourself to a massage uh, at least once a month, but I do it once a week. If you do those things, all the fundamentals every day, then, let go of the outcome. Don't worry about how you're feeling after that. You just say, you know, I do my best and I'll let life do the rest. But you need to do your best. And your best means forcing yourself to do something. And I, I, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll joke a little about this because it was, I coached someone recently who hadn't had sex with his uh, partner in six months, right? Oh, I hear that all the time. And he was saying, well, you know, I, there's something wrong with our relationship and, uh, you know, we're just not having uh, sex, or what should I do? And I just said, just have sex. He said, what do you mean? Was, I said, just have sex. And I, I said, pull your phone out, send a diary invite to your partner right now, scheduling sex, eight o'clock that night. He said, oh, it's that simple. Yeah, just do it. It's like exercise. Yeah. Don't, don't say, oh, I have to buy the shoes, I have to do this, right? Just do it. <laughs> I've had a you lot of force my yourself clients. just to do it. Once you force yourself and you're there, whether it's um, whether it's exercise or whether it's sex, it'll, your body will kick in. It'll take over. Just do it. <laughs> I have prescribed that to some of my clients. I won't mention the names, um, but whose relationships were sort of uh, suffering, and that was one of the first questions that I asked was, um, "Have you been intimate? Have you had sex?" And it's just like, "No. What? No." Like it was such a bad thing and they've been married for a very long time and I said, okay, so your cardio homework for this week <laughs> yeah. is to do that. Absolutely. And it changed <laughs> so many relationships. Um, my clients' husbands love me because it's like they've just rebuilt their relationship again and the, they just got stuck in this rut or cycle um, because of this busy life that we have because we don't have all of these things that we're talking about in balance. Absolutely, it's it's all about balance. And just a word of warning there. When I, I need this book. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we'll please send them the link so they can actually download it for free. You don't you, you don't need to buy the paper. Hey. The paperback edition will be launched next week. Yep. But I, I pretty much launched the book to just get it out there, not to make money. I have a business that makes money. So I do this just to spread the word. Because I think that, you know, you've heard the saying, uh, uh, you know, we are the sum average of our five closest people. Well, I really believe that uh, in business, we are the you know, sum average of our five, five closest uh, clients or stakeholders. So for me, the more people I have around me that are living a holistic life in balance, then it makes my life uh, great as well. You can't be around friends who are down, you know, it just weighs everyone down. So yep. that's why I share and that's why, you know, I, that I've offered the book as a free download as well. So I don't know whether you have the link, I can send that to you and you can uh, get it. I will get the link to you guys and I'll pop it on the comments here so that you guys can have access to this book, which will change your life. Now, before we go, I want to say something amazing. I think this book will change your life. That, that is, uh, and this has been out for nine years. And this a higher is, branch. And this is a book that pretty much started it all. And I know a lot of psychologists who are currently using the framework in this book. When I wrote it, I actually didn't have that in mind. I have a degree in psychology, but I don't practice psychology. But the Guide to Greatness, uh, this, this book is, uh, is pretty much just little bite-sized chapters that you can just pick up get something uh, from it and then put it down. And it's divided into eight sections, and that is uh, your health, um, your love life, your family life, your work and fulfillment, your friendships, uh, your continued learning, your wealth and your charity. So I coach from a framework uh, of the eight trees of life as uh, I pioneered in a higher branch. I use the eight trees of life as a metaphor. But that's, that's the book that's transformative. Um, a higher branch. By Sam McCall. Um, yeah, so thank you for um, uh, giving the book to your to your followers out there. Uh, I hope you guys get something out of it. And uh, the, the Higher Branch Success Academy now has seven people in it. We only started, you know, with myself and one other person a year ago, and we're just uh, growing uh, so much. So you can reach out to us at any time as well if you want to know more, more information. How? Where? Uh, well, you can visit the website w or dub dub dub. <laughs> a higher branch, a higher branch.com. And so on the contact us page, you'll see an email there, and we all get the email. Um, we also have now uh, uh, nine other leading global experts who are members of the faculty and they specialize in each of the areas. So we have Dr. Guy Winch, who's an expert in emotional well being and couples therapy as well. So he's at the event in January. He's covering um, love and intimacy, and he's also co covering emotional health, emotional well-being. And why we love Dr. Guy Winch is because he um, he's very practical. And I don't know whether you've seen his TED talk. Mm -hmm. So his TED talk is uh, in the top five most inspirational TED talks of all time. Uh, and his latest one, called How to Mend the Broken Heart, uh, has actually gone viral. Um, yeah, he's. His latest one has uh, gone viral and uh, he'll be talking at, uh, at our event. Other ones, uh, like we have Alessandra Edwards, who I mentioned, who's uh, nutrition, exercise, and sleep optimization. And she works with people like yourself. So she'll prescribe, you know, that people get in touch with thought leaders like yourself in particular areas. So exciting. Uh, so yeah, we're building up a community and we're putting, you know, thought leaders and experts in particular areas in touch with uh, people that need coaching or need information. A lot of our information on our website is completely free and we try and get as much free content out there. And even the event, um, you know, we're, we're just uh, pricing it just to break even to, uh, for, to cover the uh, you know, food and beverage for three days at the Hyatt Regency. So that's January, what was the date? Uh, it's 18th to the 20th of January. So that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And every night we have uh, a party as well, because I think whether you're in the workplace or whether you're at an event, it's not a corporate conference. Like we've got a DJ on stage. We've got, we're gonna start each session with meditation and like it's quite quite different. And uh, But uh, I adhere to the principles, you have to have fun in everything you do. Whether yeah. you're F45 or working at MSA National or attending an event. So every night we have a party where We've organised like epic experiences where you can you know mingle with other you know like minded people. This will people. be a really memorable experience for people. Who should attend your seminar? Like anyone, mums, 
husbands, hard workers, people on the dole? Well, I'm uh, urging people to bring their partner, their brother, their sister, anyone that they care deeply about who is closest to them, because it's an experience I think you need to share with someone else. How amazing would that be? Uh, like a lot of people, uh, you know, I've fallen into this trap in the past, like around Christmas time, you buy gifts and they're forgotten. You, you know, like a two years later, you know, someone will say, oh, I wonder who bought me this or, you know. <laughs> you, but I'm telling people, you know, why don't you actually uh, buy an experience and that is come to the event, buy a ticket. And um, for your readers, uh, today we have a two for one for the next five only. So we only have 40 tickets left out of 200. So for the next five people, they get a two for one. Um, wow, for I didn't even them. know that. Wow. Didn't Pete tell you? No. no. Okay, so <laughs> that's what we're doing uh, uh, as a surprise for you guys. Uh, and um, as I said, it's just an amazing, January is the best time to hit the reset button and recalibrate. And we call that upgrade your life because in three days, you're gonna discover your genetic type across the eight areas. The second day is a download of the latest information in each of the eight areas. The third day is the design day where you actually sit and craft a life plan in each one of those eight areas. And your health, you know, and health covers all those aspects. And we've got some techniques that we are proprietary to a higher branch that have never been released to the public um, that will completely, I mean, if you experience uh, anything short of an outright revolution of transformation at this event, then I, I, I think I would be completely surprised because I've seen the impact that um, my personal coaching has on people. And this event is a three-day immersion of that uh, same coaching program. Eight, it's an eight session coaching program, but this time I have these amazing thought leaders uh, who are going to be delivering the content and I'm hoping in 2020 as well that you'll be one of those people uh, that will be um, uh, uh, handing some of them our breakout sessions. So we got breakout sessions for teenagers, for so uh, a couple who have uh, kids between the age of 10 and 17. Uh, anyone under 18 attends for free, by the way. Um, because we want the family. No, the, we, yes. the family needs to grow together. You cannot upgrade your life if you don't have the enthusiastic involvement of the people closest to so you. So it's right? okay for children that are like 10 years old? Yes, yeah, so we've got bean bags at the front of the stage. We've got breakout sessions by Meredith Gaston, who's going to teach them uh, you know, how to prepare uh, healthy food. And she, she's an amazing author, uh, international bestseller, and she's talk, talking at the event. We've got a breakout session by Dr. Carl Honore, who will be uh, teaching kids how to make smart decisions uh, in their parents' absence. Uh, when it comes to food, when it comes to technology. So we're doing breakout <laughs> sessions. We also, Tom Sullivan, our meditation coach, is doing a breakout session um, uh, for um, uh, meditation for kids, teaching them, introducing them to meditation. I mean, meditation is a self-hack that you should definitely implement in your life going forward. This is something you can't ignore uh, in 2019 and beyond because there are a new breed of high achievers coming through I know because I'm coaching some of them that are eating like athletes, they're you know, uh, training religiously and they meditate like monks. And that's what you need to do. Yeah. You, you can't ignore meditation as a, as a self-hack. So the event is a holistic look at a person. So. so we've touched on the health aspect, but he has so many other aspects that he talks about in the books and obviously in this seminar in January which you guys get a two for one deal for and your kids can come for free and make it a whole family amazing event for the whole weekend. Cut your life off for those three days and go and invest in your life for those three days at the beginning of the year. What a great way to start the year strong. Yes, yes. And Sorry if it comes across as a sell, I didn't mean it to. No, I'm but... excited because I, I didn't <laughs> I, even know yeah, that. We only have 40 tickets left, as said, and I'll probably sell out very quickly in the next uh, a few weeks. We only allowed ourselves four months to actually organize this event. Um, normally, these events take one year, and, uh, and uh, what, the reason why we've done it is we've just noticed in the last few months uh, a lot of dysfunctions creeping into people's lives in the legal profession, in banking and finance, in real estate. Uh, it, 
every professional that I go and speak at, they're all saying the same thing, and it's Sam, my personal life is breaking down. And if a personal life is broken, so will their work life, so will their business performance. So that's why we rushed this event, because we felt there was an overwhelming need out there. This event was really to be held in 2020, but uh, we've, uh, through the hard work of a lot of amazing experts, we've put it together. It's going to be epic. Uh, there's going to be a lot of media there that will be talking about it. And um, uh, as I said, for 2020, I want to talk to you about what you can bring to that uh, experience. Um, uh, whether it's so exciting, you know, whether it's uh, like we're going to have a masseuse, full-time masseuse at the event as well for. Um, but whether it's you know mobility exercises, uh, whether it's breakout sessions on the psychology of health and fitness, because because health and fitness can become an emotional stress if it's not done right, and uh, so that's something you and I will uh, you know have spoken about. We'll continue to talk about and um, and for twenty uh, upgrade your life twenty nineteen. Anyone who attends the first one years from now can look back and say. I was there from the beginning. I joined the community at the beginning. And it is commu a community. So when you become a part of a higher branch, uh, you become a community, uh, part of the community for life because we are not for profit. Uh, we're there really just to, uh, you know, to spread this holistic framework for living, which we know is so powerful. I've been working on it for nine years. I've designed this. I live by it as well. Uh, and my team internally here and uh, live by it. And I think that has been the key to our success. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Sam. We've gone a little bit over time, but who cares? This stuff is so <laughs> valuable. So guys, jump onto a higherbranch.com and grab yourself your free ebook and start reading this or maybe a page of it a day. Um, you can also get your Higher Branch book, which I'm so excited to read. It's actually not written like a um, like the guide to greatness. It's actually written as a fable. Yep. You have an imagination. Well, I originally wrote it for my children. So I have three children, two boys and a girl. And I wanted, I realized that I couldn't be here with them for life. They're going to become adults. I'm going to be dead and gone. And I thought, what can I leave them with that will empower them to become their own life architect? So I wanted to leave them with a blueprint that can, that can help them manage themselves. I'm not The way I coach is I don't make people reliant on me where I become their therapist, if you like. It's arming people, empowering people with a new system for living, where they read it or attend the event. Um, it, uh, look, reading it is one thing. Attend the event is you yeah. know, a next level, the stuff, where you'll just walk away from the event thinking, you know what, I got this. Yeah. I got this. I don't need anyone. I don't need doctors. I don't need psychologists. I don't need that pill. Um, and that's what we're trying to aim for. So I wrote it for my kids, and as an unattended consequence, it started resonating with everyone else that, um, uh, that liked it. And they said, you should publish this, and that's why I published it. Yeah. Something funny is what I tell my clients when I'm training them is, guys, if I die, I still want you to come <laughs> to the gym. So I try to teach them to keep training, even um, when I'm not here. So when I was overseas a few weeks ago, um, they were sending me photos and saying, look, Helen, we're doing it. We're training all together. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, such... I love it. So that's what we really like to do. Make sure that you guys know exactly what to do. And if it's by us giving you tools or tips and tricks or education that you need, um, then we're just happy to offload it because it makes us happy. It increases our energy and we want it to increase your energy. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally contagious. All right, guys, um, I'll send the links onto those comments. If you have questions, send them in the comments. If you want to speak to Sam directly, go onto the higherbranch.com website. Um, and thank you for tuning in. I'm going to F45 now. Oh, wonderful. I'm training at 12 as well. Yeah, so. let's go we'll do it. it. <laughs> now.